Have you arrived at the airport recently, seen all the crowds, and just wanted to turn around and head right back home? Yeah, me too. Travel around the world these days is not without its problems. Flight delays, cancellations, overbooked flights, baggage delays, these things are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're traveling right now, you'll need to be prepared. And this means knowing what to do before your flight to minimize the risk of any delays or cancellations, knowing what to do during the episode to maximize your chance of finding a solution, and knowing what to do afterwards to get compensated for the delays that you may have incurred. Everything first starts before your trip, as you're planning the trip. You need to consider which credit card you're using to make your booking and which routes and flights that you're actually gonna fly. Now, most premium and mid-range travel credit cards are gonna have fairly useful travel insurance provisions. That's gonna be helpful if you charge your flight or hotel to the card. But note that not all credit cards are gonna cover you if you book on points. And if you want, say, your Aeroplan booking to be covered by travel insurance, then you better use an Aeroplan co-branded credit card issued by TD, CIBC, or American. American Express to charge the taxes and fees to that card in order to still be covered under the insurance. Now, credit card insurance won't necessarily stop any problems from happening, but it can help you get reimbursed for any costs that the airline doesn't cover in case you run into disruptions along your trip. Next, you have to consider which flight and which routes you're gonna book. Since there's major problems at all Canadian airports these days, you might wanna think about avoiding transiting through Canadian airports on route to your final destination. And if that isn't possible, try to get to the airport earlier than usual or give yourself a longer than normal connection time in case something does happen along the way. Now, if you're living in a city that has a smaller airport and you're taking a short flight to a major hub like Toronto Pearson or Montreal Trudeau in order to catch your international flight, you might just want to consider originating out of the major hub instead. Take a look at this example right here. This flight from London, Ontario to Toronto has been cancelled almost every day for the past few weeks. Now, if you're flying on a route that operates multiple times a day like Toronto to New York, for example, consider taking the earlier flight out of that entire day because those earlier flights are less likely to be caught up in delays on even earlier flights and so you're more likely to make it to your final destination on time and less likely to be caught up in cascading delays throughout the day. Now, after you've done your research and booked your flight, make sure to download the airline's app and or check the airline's website frequently in the days leading up to the flight to make sure that you haven't been hit with any delays or cancellations. Airlines are not always great at providing timely notifications when these things happen. And I often hear horror stories of people showing up to the airport and finding out right then and there that their flight had been delayed or canceled and then having to wait for hours on end for their new flight to depart. But you know what's great at providing timely notifications? YouTube. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future helpful travel videos just like this one as they come out and help you travel the world. Now, even if you've done everything you can to avoid delays and cancellations, they still might rear their ugly head. So what happens in that case and what should you do? Make sure to remain calm and level-headed and don't panic because now's the time to plan your next steps. If you are not offered a reasonable alternative flight, which often happens, sometimes the airlines just books you onto something random, now's the time to to find a flight that you want for yourself and ask the airline to rebook you on that flight. Research new flights on your own that would suit your itinerary. You can do this either on Google Flights or on the airline's website themselves. And then you can either give the airline a call or visit the agent at the airport to get them to rebook you onto your desired flight. It's easiest if you pick flights on the same airline, but if there is no other flight operated by the same airline that will suit your needs, then you can often ask the airline to rebook you on their partner airlines like their alliance partners or interline partners as well. Just to reiterate, it's almost always better to do the homework yourself, find the flight that you want, and then tell the agent you want to rebook on that flight. You'll rarely find an agent who can do that homework for you and find as ideal of flights as you can find yourself. And keep in mind, you can often use this to your advantage. For example, if you are booked with a connection at first, but there's been a delay on your flights, you can often get asked to be put on the direct flight to your destination instead. Now, after you've completed your trip, here's where the best part about a flight delay or cancellation comes in asking the airline for compensation. The rules that the airline must follow depends on the airline itself and the route being operated. But the most commonly known set of rules is perhaps the EU Regulation 261, or EU 261 for short. This legislation covers how airlines must compensate passengers in the event of delays or cancellations for flights to, from, or within the European Union. You're covered under EU 261 if you're traveling from a European Union airport on any airline, or if you're traveling to a European Union airport on a European Union airline. 
And for the purposes of this discussion, Iceland, Norway, and Switzerland are also included, even though they're not actually part of the EU. So based on these rules, if you're flying from, say, Vancouver to Frankfurt with Air Canada, you wouldn't be covered under EU 261. But if you're flying with Lufthansa on the same route, since that's a European Union-based airline, you would be covered. Now, in terms of flight delay compensation, you're entitled to varying amounts, which are displayed on screen right now, depending on the distance of your flight and how long you've actually been delayed. As you can see, you might be entitled to as much as 600 euros in compensation if you're traveling on a long haul flight and you get delayed by more than four hours. Now that's gonna put quite a bit of money back into your pocket. Now technically here in Canada, we also have the Air Passenger Protection Regulations or APPR, which is also supposed to give out compensation in the event of delays or cancellations on flights involving Canada. However, there's a key difference between Canada's APPR and the European Union's EU 261. And that's the fact that Canada's APPR excludes delays and cancellations that are within the airline's control but required for safety reasons. As you can imagine, Air Canada and WestJet being the greedy airlines that they are, naturally will chalk up as many delays and cancellations as possible to reasons within their control but required for safety reasons so that they don't have to pay out compensation. And that's exactly the behavior that we've seen from the airlines over the past few months. Unfortunately, our own regulations here in Canada are enforced a lot less strictly than over in Europe. But that doesn't mean that all is lost. That's where the Montreal Convention comes in, which is a treaty signed by 132 countries and applies whenever you're traveling on a flight from one of the member countries to another member country. So for example, if you're traveling from the US to Canada, both of which are Montreal Convention signatories, then the Montreal Convention applies. If you're traveling on a domestic flight within Canada, then unfortunately it doesn't apply. But what the Montreal Convention states is that passengers that suffer loss, damage, or delay to their baggage and incur damages as a result are entitled to compensation of up to 1,288 special drawing rights. What is a special drawing right, you might ask? Well, it's essentially a made-up currency that's composed of a basket of other currencies. And as of the publication of this video, 1,288 special drawing rights is equivalent to about 2,290 Canadian dollars. Now that's a pretty hefty amount of compensation to be getting for your lost and delayed bags, isn't it? Now the key here is that you must have incurred damages as a result of the lost, damaged, or delayed bag. And you must be able to document and show the damages that you've incurred if you're going to claim compensation for them. So let's say you had to attend a very important business meeting with very important people right after coming off your flight and your $2,290 suit happened to be in your suitcase that got delayed along the way. In this case, you'd be able to go out and buy a a replacement suit for your very important business meeting because your old suit happened to be in the bag that got delayed. And you'd be able to submit this as a claim for damages that you had incurred as a result. Of course, as usual, you can bet that the airlines will try to wriggle out out of giving you the compensation that they must provide under the Montreal Convention, if at all possible. And so the more clearly you can document the circumstances around your $2,000 suit purchase, such as, for example, a written testament from other attendees at your very important business meeting, then the easier of a time you'll have collecting the compensation that you're due. Yes, it's important to get the compensation that you're owed, but nobody said it was gonna be an easy process. And a lot of this may have been avoided if we go back to the start of the video and chose the right credit card with the right credit card travel insurance. Make sure to watch this video next to understand everything you need to know about credit card travel insurance so that you can book your next trip with the right credit card and maximize your coverage as you travel the world during these uncertain times.